Hello Tubesters, it's me Gav and welcome to another one of my videos. Today we will be looking at uh, this. You know, it's not an unboxing, I've already done one and I've actually already cleaned the parts off these. Uh, there might be a few of you that noticed I actually put a video up where I actually showed the parts uh, not literally working on them because I've got a mask on and all the rest of it but I'd stop, you know, stop and show you the next part cleaned up and my thoughts on it and things like that. However, I'd managed to also leave uh, the T34 last tank video on it, I think, as well. And I just, boom, 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 put them all together. And thanks to Archie uh, from Common Road Junction, I believe. Uh, sorry, Archie, I've stuffed that up. Uh, he was kind enough to send me a message and say, Gav, you've left the tank video on at the front. So uh, it was a bad week there <laughs> last week. Uh, and when it's bad weeks, things tend to go awry. So uh, if anybody did see that before I took it down, I apologise. Uh, so this is slightly truncated, which is uh, probably good for all you guys out there. Um, because as we all know, I can, sp I can spin out a, a supposedly five minute video into 25 minutes or 55 minutes for that matter. Uh, so I just wanted to go through, because obviously I'm going to get rid of I've actually kept the different segments, but I'm just going to get rid of it all. Uh, the the tools that I, I use to clean up uh, the resin figure. Now Life Miniatures are a, a really well known company for those of us that uh, paint busts and large scale figures or display figures as I call them. Uh, this is the first one I've actually got of theirs. Uh, it's quite a complicated figure. Uh, don't be put off by all the little bits and pieces on that I'm going to show you and some of the filling that's going to be required. Uh, the filling, not because it's massively uh, bad fit, uh, it's just that there's, there's quite a few parts to it that obviously parts being connected, unless they can disguise them somehow that they usually need some type of filling. The Lucky Jack bust that I was, my very first one and is my channel icon, that was literally a hat to head and a torso. So, you know, if you if you fancy getting into painting these these type of things, you know, don't be put off by by all the bits and pieces on this one. This is a, a more complicated uh, bust just because the amount of pieces that's involved, and usually you can go by the uh, reflected in the price, which uh, for this one I think was around fifty pounds. So you'll be looking at spending anywhere from you can get some very cheap ones uh, for twenty five, thirty quid. You can get some of them from. Mitch's models for as those V V busts I showed you can literally get pick them up for twelve fifteen pounds a piece, uh, but these ones, uh, you know this type of bust you're looking at anywhere from from thirty thirty to fifty five pounds. So so this is this is fairly top end for a uh, a bust. Uh, you can get some more of what you could I suppose you could call the boutique. You know they come in all the little bits. Of it's a paper and you get your sticker and your your butt your badge and all that you just think I don't want any of that keep the price down and just give me the figure <laughs> anyway uh, let's just have a quick look at the I will go down to the the bench to show you the bits I've cleaned off um, in a minute but first of all uh, I always wet the bench down uh, tend to get damp arms but I wet the bench down I put kitchen towel over it, wet that down and that will catch a lot of your dust. Uh, it's resin, it's not very good for you. Please follow the directions in your own country and the directions on the, of the manufacturers, whoever you, they, they may be, onto what you should be doing. Uh, I wear one of these when I'm working with resin. I turn the, t the laptop sound off, but not the phone. Uh, yeah, uh, I wear one of these. I'm not saying these filters are particularly the right ones, but they do it for me. That's good enough for me. Um, this is enclosed around me, and I've got two filters on. So that's what that, and that I use that specifically for doing any resin type stuff, whether they're the small Harry Potter figures or to the to these big busts. Uh, I use a razor saw to get rid of the casting blocks, and you will need some type of saw. Casting blocks are quite chunky on these size figures or busts, and they require a fair bit of surgery to them to remove them. You know, just trying to hack away with a a, a scalpel or an exacto knife, it won't it won't cut it. So 
These are fairly cheap. I get these from I got these from a model shop a good few years ago, but uh, I see them when I go on, on modelling things and channel uh, shops and whatever, and they're they're fairly cheap. They're not. You you can get some a lot of guys use them for the scale models, a lot of the smaller thinner ones, but I do believe this is fairly good for cutting them big chunky resin blocks. So I use one of those, uh, whichever size for you know obviously it's the size I, I need. A uh, couple of sanding uh, items. You've got your straights here, and I've got some nail file, nail boards, as emery board type things as well, uh, to give you a really hard, flat uh, finish. The only thing with these guys are these different uh, ones, and I've got obviously the larger variations as well, uh, and is a lot of busts obviously you're doing more curves and things uh, and these are flexible to a degree but uh, I I only use these mainly on the very small items uh, I tend to use this type of stuff now this is marked these are off cuts I bought uh, uh, P1500 to P1200 I never understand them I just go rough smooth whatever <laughs> uh, they were all the same type I, I bought a job lot off eBay um, and they've been great, they'll last me forever. Uh, just off cuts, they come in all different sizes like this. But I believe they're all they're all the same, the same uh, uh, roughness, of course. That might be the word I was after. But again, this will this is easier. It will conf I, I dip this in water. I have an old takeaway tray, fill fill it with water, and again, wet and dry. You're keeping that dust down uh, to a minimum. Uh, so yeah, I use that if the if it starts building up too much, I tend to wrap it up, put it in my bin. It's all the the tam the, the towels all damp. Put another one down, start again. Uh, but yeah, I, f I find this is very good. It's like a medium coarseness, so it's not going to put great grooves in your your figures. Uh, but at the same time, it, it does what I need it to do. I've also got finishing sanding paper, really smooth stuff. You know, if, if I if I need to go that far. Um, and obviously, trusty scalpel. I, I use these Swan Morton scalpels that gets used for everything, but I put a fresh blade on. Most of us do for whatever we're using, if it's a particular cutting project we need. Uh, these are really cost effective. And you can get a, I'm still using the same, I bought a hundred, I think it was a hundred or five hundred, I can't remember, a box of blades about two, three years ago, and I'm only about halfway through them. And you can get the rounded ones uh, as well. Obviously, exacto knives people use those. Yes, this is flat rather than a round, but uh, I, I really swear by these Swan Mortons. I think they're great. Uh, I'm going to be going on to filling uh, in a, in the next video, so I don't think we'll bother going down that road until the, until we do it. But uh, uh, yeah, so that's that's all the tools more or less I used. Uh, let's get down to the bench. We'll just have a quick look at the, the bits I've carved up. Right, guys, I didn't say this again. We, this is this is putting the, was it the cart before the horse or whatever, uh, unlike the, the, the vi proper video I did for all this. Uh, I'm doing this as a tribute uh, to my little Mara Barkley. Uh, he's my best friend. Uh, uh, he's one of my two Cocker Spaniels, uh, and I say I lost him two years ago now, uh, this week. So uh, this is a tribute to him because, as I said to you guys before, he was always crawling all over me like this. Uh, he was black. I'll show you a photograph of him or try and get a photograph in there at some stage over this, this build, definitely at the end. Uh, but this is my tribute to my little bloke. Uh, me and my wife thought it would be a good tribute to him. So uh, that's why I'm doing this particular bust. So... Yeah, well, yeah, that's it. <laughs> so, join me in a second and we'll get this unboxed. Right, they come very well packed. Uh, a couple of layers of foam, as, as usual. These. I'll deal with these first. And then we'll have a look at the large pieces. Of it. Now, I haven't actually cleaned these up yet. They're the only bits I didn't do. So I'll put that back there so we can roughly see. It's not going to let me. Right, thick tube here with me thumbnail on. It's probably going to be this one here. 
with the stripes and then we've got the old fashioned cords uh, going up to his uh, his microphone earpieces uh, I did clean these up uh, this is for the parachute uh, lock you, you know you punch it or move it or something to, to get in and out uh, the the only thing that it hasn't got is any type it would have been nice to have had a, a stamp of writing as that's normally stamped and it hasn't so I'm going to have to try and do some type of writing hopefully on that uh, little roll of uh, it is in there somewhere of webbing for the uh, in parachute to do with the parachute harness I think somewhere down there and the little strap is somewhere up here right this is the main torso as I say I have actually done an unboxing I believe on this so uh, it's really just to show you what I've been doing and you can't really see a lot of, <laughs> not on not on the torso anyway apart from the base this had a very thick piece uh, as thick as this chunk is here that went straight across uh, well when you look at it side on I'm happy with that there's no point thinning that out because it's actually part of the mold there I will fill these in you're not going to see it anyway but these are the cutting marks you couldn't avoid it um, but I might just put a bit of filler in there but it's going to be sat like that so you won't see that and something like that you'd paint black in shadow you know just to say you know it's uh, it's in shadow you see our parachute to uh, pull the ripcord type thing that's where that circle will go but you see he's got his uh, his cravat uh, they wore these, it wasn't just a fashion accessory, uh, they might have turned it into a, you know, who could have the brightest scarf, but it's a silk one and they, it was because the pilots used to have continuously having to be turning their heads to look behind them to see who was on the tail, they, uh, they used to get the neck all chafed, so they actually started wearing silk scarves of different descriptions because it was more comfortable on the neck. Now I, I, put in there I chased out a small uh, I had to remove a casting block on the elbows um, I had to chase that out because that's part of the seam there of the actual cloth I think I went a bit too deep so I'm gonna have to just put some Mr. Service 500 in there just to fill it slightly as you can see it runs down there that was already in it was just a bit of the casting block now these fit uh, I've got to make sure I get that the right way there is a gap that's going to need uh, filling and whichever way you press it in it's going to be more on one side than the other uh, that's just how it is obviously this is where the spaniel is going to go over his shoulder I've got this guy here that goes across himself now you can paint these in separate parts sometimes people will put the arms separate I do prefer I've never had to do one this complicated, but I do prefer to have them intact as far as possible because I just think you've you've then got to fill like this will need filling, so if it's going to be filled, you might as well have it all in all together type of thing. It just means that these nooks and crannies are a bit harder to, to get access to. But some people are still they find it easier to paint them off like that and then stick them towards the end and then paint paint back in there again. Uh, obviously it's courses for courses. Make any more noise, go. Right, and this is this is the spaniel. Again, we've got a fair bit of filling to do around the neck. Uh, you can see the fur goes in and over in places. The there is a collar half shown there, but that's going to need a fair bit of filling. I've never actually had one that has required so much filling. Uh, before because my the ones I've done have been purposely very simplistic in there you know well not simplistic but you know there, there's not a lot to them so uh, this is going to be fun actually prepping this uh, you know getting this actually filled and smoothed out so that you can, I'm not very good at that type of thing as we all know uh, well, I had to round off and smooth out a bit of this this goes, I think this is the one, 
doing this behind the camera. Uh, is that it? That might be it. Yeah, I think that's the one. Again, I, I wouldn't keep those off. I just want to. I want to do these. You know, you might be able to get away with some not filling because obviously the strap of the the goggles is over there. But at the back here, obviously, it's going to need some some filling in. So that's the one side, and we're not going to be able to do this, are we, without a, getting into a right mess? And that's the other. Again, as you can see, though, if you do keep retain those on, it's always a catch-22. It's either really hard to paint round, uh, or you make a right mess joining things up after the fact. And obviously, like we did with the Soviet fighter pilot, uh, we're going to be painting his helmet through the goggles, if that makes sense. Uh, his hands, there's a one. There's a very slight webbing in there. I just couldn't get that any to look any better. I'm hoping that paint's going to make it look a bit better, but I still might have another go on that yet before I actually. Uh, I've got a bit before we, I've got another week or so before I prime it. I've got to fill fill bits yet. You can see there's a bit there that will probably need. And uh, <laughs> isn't it amazing? You look at sick with fresh eyes, and there's bits you need to do. Well, that's a, probably the the beauty of it. The that one is that one. I'm sure that this one fits well into it. There's a little plug. I can't do it at the moment because we're all it's upside down and that. But that one fits in. That one okay. Now there isn't one there. There's just this little this little nub. But there's nothing. Uh, there's actually nothing in the the hand itself. So whether you'd have to drill a bit out for that to fit. And there's a, I need to clean this up down here slightly. There. I need to sort that out, which I knew about. So there's a fair bit there's a fair there's, I'm not used to this amount of of <laughs> fettling <laughs> and getting things to fit right. You do get as well. Uh, this as a as a mounting piece to go on your wooden block. Um, I'm not 100 percent sure what I'm going to be doing with stuff yet, but I did clean that up. So uh, let's uh, see if we've got the artwork again, just to give you something to look at. That's going to be our guy. As I say, there's a heck of a lot of filling to to do with that yet. Uh, there's bits I'm not very confident at all. I'm not confident in filling. <laughs> I'm not confident in writing stuff like that. And I'm definitely not confident in doing this stenciling. I just don't know if I if I did that freehand, it'll look freehand. I just know it will. It's going to look rough as hell. So somehow, somehow I've got to try and. You know, gonna have to try and I don't know make some type of stencil up. Answers on a postcard, I think, on that one. That's that's really. I mean, I don't want to leave leave it off. And if you notice, it's the these are the like the pre-war and then the first part of the war. They weren't the yellow May Wests. They were the they were the green before the before the more you know well-known yellow ones turned up. So guys, thanks for joining me at the start of this uh, this build, or build, or bust painting. As I say, the next one I'm doing, uh, I've got to go through these last couple of bits this weekend, uh, clean those last couple of bits off, then uh, I've got to stick them on and fill them all. Uh, I will show that, I won't, I'll show it once it's been filled and I'll tell you what I've filled it with. Um, and then we'll be getting onto the primer, and then we'll be getting onto obviously getting finally getting a brush on it. But as I say, please don't be put off if you fa fancy having a go with this type of thing. Don't be put off by it. Uh, this one's just complicated. If you looked at my Native American bust warrior planes, if you looked at the Soviet fighter pilot bust from Medieval Forged Miniatures, that wasn't half half as uh, complicated as this. Uh, you know, so you know. If you fancy having a go, don't think you're going to have to be in lots of cutting and filling. 
Uh, it's just that this one is a fairly complicated uh, bust and will probably take me a couple of months to paint. <laughs> so thanks for joining me guys, yet again I'll say it, uh, and we'll catch each other very very soon on another video. Cheers.